have no idea what I'm going to do to record. <laughs> no. I'll, I'll decide later on. So anyway. cool. As long as you keep your eyes peeled for my iced tea, because it's coming over my shoulder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that it's obviously a, a problem. Yeah. Um, there's some legislation that's been introduced I'm not that's related to police reform. I'm not sure whether it's going to go anywhere or not. Uh, most of them haven't had hearings yet, so hmm. I think it'll be interesting to see if the majority decides to take any of that up. Hmm. Hmm. So, it's a weird time at the state house. I don't know if you've seen the news. Um, I heard about the uh, bunch of Republicans and like a few Democrats got arrested for, uh, or like they're implicated in like the house. No, dem no none of the dem it was only the speaker. Oh yeah, oh, I mean the speaker got arrested, but I think there was a bunch of Republicans who were implicated as well. Like there they were four other ones, yeah. so there were five that got um, indicted. Uh -huh. uh, the speaker and then four other like operatives, but no other um, members or anything. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, I heard there was like a bunch of Republicans who were like, they weren't arrested, but they were like implicated because they took money from this whole deal. Oh, there are a lot. So a lot of people have received contributions mm. from First Energy on both sides mm. of the aisle. Mm. Um, but I don't I don't think that we know fully the, the breadth of yeah. who is or isn't yeah. implicated. So. Yeah, I mean, I follow a lot of like Democrats and Democrat-friendly yeah. uh people on Twitter, yeah. and a lot of them make it sound like like it's mostly Republicans who are taking money from um, First Energy. If you're saying that there might be more Democrats and they're just not saying anything, or they just don't know. Oh, no, uh, I'm not saying that they're implicated in it. I'm just saying that First Energy has contributed to both Democrats and Republicans. The oh. only people that have been really like inveigled in the scandal are Republicans. So... Oh, okay. And the scandal itself is... Right. Yeah. I, get, I get what you're saying. Because it's legal for... It's legal for them to um, contribute money... So I want to make sure my ring is up. It's legal for them to contribute money through their um, political... Con political contributing arm. Mm. Uh, but I think they're still just investigating what all might be underneath there. Yeah. So... They've really refined this a lot. Uh, last time. Uh, a little bit of a cluster. Talk to him. Oh, right back. Okay. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I know, I feel like this place that you either win the jackpot and there's like no line or uh, there's 20 people in line. And today was definitely a 20 people. Yeah, I, I can't remember the last time I've been to a coffee shop and the last time it was like Starbucks or something. So. Yeah, I'm still trying to do most of our meetings like via Zoom or Zoom. phone, but yeah. if, since if it wasn't going to meet outside, I was like, we can do this. <laughs> Well, one reason why I wanted to meet in person, because, like, uh, a couple of, I, I don't know if you, like, know this, like, in some, like, Zoom meetings that, that I was in, like, I was, like, talking about all kinds of stuff in, like, the uh, text chat on Facebook, mm -hmm. but, like, it seems like only, like, a select few of them were actually, like, brought to the attention of the, the legislators. I yeah. Mean, yeah, so, like, I just felt like it was, um, basically, even, like, even the statements that they brought, up, brought to light that I was saying, like they were like sterilizing them. Like I referred to like the politicians, and she, uh, I think it was Jessica, like changed that to like legislators. So like, wow, was even when she was picking out the stuff that I was saying, like it was like being like sterilized. Well, so one of the things is that when we do those ones with your legislators mm -hmm. town halls, it's an official, it's an official function uh -huh. of our offices, and uh -huh. so we can talk about legislation, we can talk about policy, but it's not really the forum for political debates, if that makes uh, okay. sense. Yeah. Um, so I'm sorry that you feel, that you felt that way. So yeah. the way that we work is we have folks who sort of monitor yeah. Facebook, and we try to get to as many questions as possible, but I can count on like probably two fingers the number of times that we've been able to get through all of the questions yeah. that we've had on lunch with your legislators, which we were really worried at the beginning, because yeah. we're like, you know, an hour is a decent amount of time to try to fill with all this content and we have actually had way too much content <laughs> instead of not enough which I guess is a good problem to have yeah. so no so do you feel like you had questions that you wanted answered that we could talk about today um not 
I don't. It was a while. I think it was like months ago. Yeah. So I don't remember exactly what questions I asked back then. I mean, I might accidentally bring them up. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, um, back to like police brutality. Like, um, I mean, what do you? What's your perspective on what's been happening? I think it's that like, there are like two sides. There are like it's more than two sides. But I feel like there are people like on the extreme ends who think like. You know, like a cop sneezes the wrong way and the cops are acting wrong. Yeah. That people on like, the other end were like, you know, a cop can just like shoot at, like twelve people in the back, unprovoked, and be like, well, I mean, he sh- he has reasons, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I mean, I'm I'm annoyed by both those people, and it's just it's become there's so, always a ton of gray. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's become very political. It's like then you have like the race issue where like. There's been plenty of times where like a white guy gets shot by the cops, you know, and it's like un- it's unfair, it's unfair. But yet that just gets sweeped on the rug, or not really sweeped on the rug. It just it doesn't have that much attention to it. Yeah. But then you have a black guy who gets shot by the cops, and like that's the one that gets like all this you know attention. Yeah. And also, it kind of feels like it's like certain instances that are like really like um, that get a lot of attention. Because, like, there have been instances where, like, a black guy gets shot, and it's, like, clear cut the cop was in the wrong. But, like, it, it, it didn't bring up that much attention. You know, yeah. it's just, like, you know, one of many cases of British brutality. I thought the guy's name. Which I would say that, that that deserves attention, too. I think, yeah. like, on your earlier point, I'm not sure. I'm going to write myself a note to check into this. I think that the instances of, like, white cops shooting white people is a lot lower than it is of white cops shooting well, people of color. And so, if and you I, mean, don't... I, I also say that as, like, I've been supported by the police in, like, in the past. Um, I mean, I definitely think there needs to be reform, but I think if there's going to be reform, then it has to involve the folks who do that work every day. Mm-hmm. And so I think that to to believe that we can reform the system mm-hmm. without having folks at the table who do the work is probably not practical. Yeah. Um, I can find. I, I'm, probably, I'm not gonna find it right right now, but I'll send it to you afterwards. But okay. like, um, I was listening to this podcast where they had a guy who was like part of the police force. He eventually quit on like moral reasons. And like he was talking about like all the shit you have to like cop through in order to become a cop, and it's just like a system itself that's like it's not very good for good cops. It's like it's a good if you're like um, basically if you like the system, then it's good. But it's not very good if you actually want to like help people. Yeah. Because like one of the things like they were getting on his case for like not writing enough parking tickets or something, something like that, or like he wanted to go out there and like actually like help people. Yeah. yeah. So, uh... I'm keeping a note for you for my uh, stuff. That's, that's fine. <laughs> I used to take them all in my notebook, and then I realized that my handwriting really leaves a lot to be yeah. desired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, what else do I want to bring up? I mean, the, uh, I think that police officers and law enforcement officers have really hard jobs, and, you know, the risk that they take just by walking out the door is so different than what most of us yeah. do when we go to work, whether it's at an office or a grocery store yeah. or wherever. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Like, people like to, like, counter that by saying, like, well, there are other jobs that are, like, more dangerous, which I agree with. But it's, like, you got to um, compare, like, like with like. Like, they'll compare, like, a truck driver. If you're a truck driver, you're driving a truck. But, like, if you're a police officer, you can be, like, on the beat, or you can be, like, just, like, walking, you can be, like, in the office, just, like, filling out paperwork, yeah. you know? Well, and there's, like, inherent danger, but it's, it's different. Yeah. It's interesting, because after the, after George Floyd was killed, I was, I was talking to my husband, because my cousin's husband, who's a police officer, we were just talking about what had happened, and he was like, that is not yeah. the way that you police, yeah. not the officer that perpetrated it, not the people who stood around yeah. him, that's just not the way that it's supposed to work, yeah. um, which I thought was really interesting from his perspective as a law enforcement officer himself. Yeah, other law, I've heard a lot of cops are saying that, uh, yeah. there's one YouTuber I follow named uh, Donut Operator, uh, he used to be in the police force for quite a while, and he yeah. talked about how like, shit like that, it's not really supposed to go on that go down like that um another thing about that is like people automatically want to go with like a the race perspective because it's like a, a white cop like kneeling on a black guy 
But it's like, I don't want to assume that like every interaction between, like, every negative interaction between like a black person and a white person is automatically racial. Yeah. You know, I just feel like that's just like putting fuel on the fire. It just makes it like harder for people to actually look at the actual situation mm-hmm. and come to like a fair conclusion. Because yeah. like, one thing I hear is like, when it comes to like cops are like charged with crimes, they, they tend to like overcharge them. And so like when it comes in front of the jury and they read all the evidence, it's like, okay, he may have been guilty of this crime. We were charging with this like worst crime, and so we can't convict him on this worst crime. Yeah, you know. No, and I think that's a. I think that that is a huge problem. I think that's a problem just generally, yeah. like overcharging people. I think that cash bail is a huge problem yeah, because I, you know you get people that are locked up for something small that can't afford to get themselves out, and so then. You're in, you can't get out, you know, your wages get garnished, you can't get out, you can't go to work. And it just creates this cycle that makes it so much more difficult for people to be able to actually go back to work and to be productive and to take care of themselves and their families. And it's like, are we actually trying to, like, just punish people for the sake of punishing them? Or are we trying to really make sure the change? Yeah, that's, that's not the name of the cash bail thing. It's like, how dangerous is somebody do you really consider somebody if like they just give you money and you're like they're allowed to leave mm-hmm. like I think there should be like a different system and like I can understand people complain about the system because they have this situation where like some guy gets arrested for something he gets out on bail and he goes out and like commits another crime like he murders someone or attacks someone or whatever so I can understand that situation Wait, but, and that's a problem yeah I know but I also understand it's like I'm willing to admit that just getting real like the bail system, you're gonna have situations where like the person was accused of a crime, they might actually have done that crime. And so laying them out allows them to be able to um, commit other crimes. But, like what about all the people who are like they get out on bail and they don't commit any crimes, right. you know, they're they're actually just innocent people. Or they can't get out. Yeah, they can't get out at all. And so like I mean, who are we willing to sacrifice in this situation? Yeah. And I mean I think that's a that is just a problem generally well and making sure that people have more opportunity you know for employment you know if they do have to you know spend time in prison making sure that it's like they have opportunities when they get out because if not then that also makes it more difficult so but i think these are the interesting thing is like i think these are all hard questions with no easy answer which i think scares people from And I think it's also hard because for me, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to say that like something is a problem, mm-hmm. then I want to say, and this is what I would suggest for a solution. Or if we know that this is a problem and the system isn't working, then what should we look at? And, mm-hmm. Or who should we talk to in order to try mm-hmm. to fix it instead of just, well, this is a huge problem. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which I think that is one of the more frustrating things is because you have so many people who are like, this is a huge problem. This is a huge problem. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, well, what do you think that we should do about it? Or what do you think is the right course of action? And they're like, well, this is a huge problem. <laughs> it's like, I yeah. agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. This is a problem. But how are we going to figure out how to fix it? <laughs> I, um... <laughs> I, I didn't really plan this out very well, so no, I feel like fine. I'm, like, jumping around. Like, yeah, back to yeah. where I was talking about, like, uh, the, the racial aspect of, like, you know, Derek Chauvin. Like, people are automatically calling him racist. But, like, I, I don't know if that's actually true that he actually was. Like, you know, maybe he was racist, I don't know. But I would, like, have to you know, see some evidence of that. And so, like, if you watch uh, more, like, the full video of what happened, it seems like they were having, like, serious trouble actually, like, dealing with Derek Chauvin. And from what I heard about him, he was, like, a pretty tall guy, pretty big guy. And so, even with, like, four people, it might be kind of hard to actually deal with him without actually hurting him. You know? And so, like, I heard that the reason why he was on the ground was because, like, he didn't want to get in the car because he claimed he was claustrophobic. And they supposedly asked to be, like, put on the ground. And so they put him on the ground. So that's why he was on the ground. Now, as far as like it, the knee being on his neck, that was obviously wrong. That's still yeah. wrong, regardless yeah. of the situation. And let's see. But I think that's also why it's important to have people in positions like attorneys general and prosecutors who are really mindful of thoroughly investigating things to see, okay, where did this go wrong, and how could we maybe perform our training protocols, or how can we make sure that, you know, things are just not repeated like this, because it's a huge problem. Yeah. Oh, back to the race issue, like, I think, you said that, like, there was, like, more black people getting shot by the police than white people. I made myself a note to follow up with you on that. Yeah, because from what I heard, it's, um, like, 
per capita, there's more black people getting shot. But there's also like more black people being engaged in crime. You know. But then the question is like, are they get, are are yeah. is that actually true, or is, are I there mean, just more instances yeah. of police? With. So definitely send me the stuff that you have. Well, I mean, there, there is statistics that shows that like black people per capita are more engaged in crime. I mean, it doesn't mean that black people in general are engaged in crime, but just there's of the people who are criminal, there's like higher percentage of black who are engaged in crime. And so that means that there's more uh, interaction between the police and like uh, black people. But that's the thing about it. It's like I've heard people complain about how like the black community is like over policed. And so, like, if there's police, like, constantly going around your neighborhood, if you're committing a crime, you're more likely to get caught. Whereas people in other um, other neighborhoods, other demographics, if they're committing a crime, like, they're less likely to get caught because there's less police activity in there. And I feel like they're heading in that direction of, like, kind of like a libertarian beliefs of, like, if there's, like, no crime, or there's no um, victim, there's no crime. And so if you have, like, police going around, they, like, arrest somebody for, like, you know, weed or something like that, like, that's, like helping the bog down the system. Yeah. Well, so, I think my concern is more in, like, equal application of it. So, like, if everything is, if all things are equal, mm -hmm. then would you treat, you know, well, a white person the same as you would treat a person of color if they were engaged in the same kind of activity, legal yeah. or not. Yeah. You know, um, and so that is really my my bigger thing is like how do we ensure that people are treated the same way whether they're doing right or wrong yeah. so right like yeah. if you're doing something wrong then you should be treated the same way doing that wrong thing but if you're both doing something right then you should also be treated the same way for that does that make sense yeah i agree i, I agree with what you're saying yeah. it's like if people are saying that the system itself is like biased then you would want to give that system like less power and so, like, by passing more and more laws, by criminalizing more and more activity, you give the system more power, you give the cops, like, if the cop actually was racist, yeah. you give them more of an excuse to, like, harass, like, some black person or some Hispanic person or Asian person, whatever this, you know, police officer, back to his racist, does not like. I apologize. I forgot to tell one of our staff people that I did not even... I, I, I can't hear you, Mr. Carter. Oh, sorry. We have a standing um, Zoom meeting for one of the pieces of legislation that we're working on, but I forgot to tell her that we're not having our meeting today. Uh, Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Because she usually gets on um, just to make sure that I don't, you know, like, uh, foul things up. <laughs> yeah, um, this is a Twitter guy named uh, Wonderbun or something. And, uh... He like posted this article about how um, black people were disproportionately being um, arrested for breaking a curfew. I don't think it was a curfew. It was like the um, the laws revolving around the lockdown. Like, oh, they were yeah. more likely being um, you know, prosecuted for that. And I, and I responded with, like, are you saying that the government that you keep calling racist use the power that you beg to have to go against people you don't like or they don't like? Like to me, that sounds um, it, it sounds very counterproductive to say. You know, the, the government's racist or the police are racist, but then you're going to keep giving the government and the police more and more power. Well, yeah, and I would say, like, you should punish everybody that, it, you know, like, you should enforce the laws the same way. Like, if you're going to say, hey, you know, we're shut down and you need to be at home, then whether you're black, white, purple, striped, whatever, like, take your rear end. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But then there's other aspects, like, not everybody's, like, committing crimes, like, equally, you know? Yeah. It's like, would you say that it's unfair that there's more men in prison than women? I mean, I think it depends on who's, you know, I think it depends on if the laws are being equally applied, you know, mm -hmm. so like if... Yeah, but does, if, if it so happens that like men commit more crimes than women, like wouldn't it make sense that there'd be more men in prison than women? I mean, if men and women who are committing crimes are treated the same way, then that, that to me is the bigger thing, is mm -hmm. that equitable prison. So. Well, that's another aspect. It's just I feel like people just automatically assume that there's a bias, and like they use like the evidence that like well, there's more black people in prison. It's like actually, I, forgot, I think it was like Al Sharpton or one of those guys who was like talking about like like um, how there's more black people in prison, and some guy asked him questions like, but there's also more men in prison, so is there a bias against men as well? And like, he kept like walking around the question, and not answering it, and so I just find it interesting that like. The same metric they're using to say that there's bias against black people. A lot of times you can say there's the same. You can use that same metric to say there's bias against like all kinds of people. Mm. It's 
I think one of the hard things about, so like one of the things, and I think we've talked about this, like making laws and changing laws is hard and it mm. takes forever, mm. which in some ways is really frustrating, but in mm. other ways is good because it shouldn't be something that can be easily changed in mm. short order just because of how widespread all the yeah. implications of it are. And so I think when we talk about things like prison reform, police reform, criminal yeah. justice reform, you know, it's just like what we were talking about before, like we know that we need to take a look at it, mm. but then it's like how do we figure out the way that does the most good mm. for the greatest number of people and isn't disproportionately badly mm. impacting folks because I think sometimes, you know, we're so busy, like, we gotta do it, we gotta do it, we gotta do it, mm. that we're not really seeing, like, okay, this sounds like a good idea yeah. on paper, but, so, and I mean, some people might say the same thing about health school things, like, you know, you're in such a hurry to repeal it, and, but I mean, I think that's a completely different circumstance. Mm -hmm. So. I don't see why private companies are getting bill out anyway. Well, I they, agree. They, they should not have ever happened. I agree. Happened. I was definitely opposed to that <laughs> all the way along, especially when they never proved that they needed it in the first place. Wow. Yeah, so like there are a couple things. So, you know, a lot of people said it was a job spoke because there weren't any jobs guarantees in it. Some people said, you know, that First Energy really needed it, but they never proved it. And then you also had the rollback of all the renewable energy standards. And so all of those things together, you know, made it a little less pal. Plus, it's an increase for ratepayers mm. all over the state. Oh, wow. No. Yeah. And I mean, you know me well enough to know, like, I don't like when people <laughs> raise, you know, rates, taxes, prices. <laughs> I actually don't know you that well at all, to be honest. People work hard. <laughs> you I, follow me on Twitter, you know, well, that yeah. I'm always ranting about, you know, well, I don't working see, folks and not getting their paychecks. Yeah, but, but I don't see, like, all your tweets, you know, it's like, I don't see. Well, why not? You should pay attention. <laughs> As my mom would say, there are lots of pearls of wisdom in there. <laughs> so... Yeah. I could step up the content of my cute niece, but. <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, yeah, to be honest, I follow like all kinds of people on Twitter, so I don't see like everybody's tweets. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, what else is like sort of top of mind for you lately? Uh, oh, one thing people are bringing up is uh, qualified immunity. How like if cops and just have this immunity that's like they'd be less willing to like shoot someone. I'm making another note about yeah. this. I think that somebody has a bill about this. Uh, and I just can't I remember. think it was Justin Amash. I mean, I don't know about like on a state level, but like on a federal level, I think Justin Amash has something like that. I feel like there might be something on the state level. Um, yeah. also, if there is, I'll email it to you. Also, uh, what's his face? Rand Paul. He has his uh, the, the Justice for Beyond Taylor Act. He's like pushing that. I don't know how far that's gone, but yeah. I, I Do you think, know what it is? I'm not familiar with I've it. I've never read it, but from what I've heard, it basically like bans no knock raids. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you're supposed to like ban them because, like, like you're. I think the idea is like someone's supposed to, the police are supposed to address themselves. But the thing is, like, the person inside the house can always say that they didn't hear the person say it. So. Like but that doesn't mean they shouldn't do it. Necessarily. I mean, they, they should. Yeah. But it's like, how you, the whole point is like, you're trying to keep people accountable. Yeah. Keep the cops accountable. So yeah. like, they can always say that, well, we shouted, we said that we yeah. announced ourselves, but the person inside like, didn't hear. You know? So, um, which kind of, <laughs> which kind of leads me to, um, like, the whole Brown and Taylor situation. And I've been arguing, like, there are plenty of people who like, they assume like, I'm like far right because of the decisions I take, but I spend a lot of time like, arguing against gun control. Yeah. And so when I'm arguing like, against like, the cops who shot Brown and Taylor, there are a lot of people who accuse me of being like, you know, far left or whatever. And so like. How does that feel to be like, you're too far right, you're too far left. <laughs> I was. I just think it's kind of funny. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you do this. You do this. <laughs> Let's see. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. Like, you know, I I'm not, I argue against like the cops who like shot uh, Breonna Taylor because they like. I mean, 
from the get go, like they were, she was accused of um, oh nothing. People think that seem to think that um, they got the wrong house, but that's not true. Like they got the right house, they got the right place. Like her name's on the warrant, and I don't think it was like an arrest warrant. I think it was like a warrant to just search her place. Yeah. So it's like they weren't even there to arrest her, just to search the place. But yet, like they have like this no knock raid as if there were um, going in to somebody who they knew or at least had enough evidence that they were guilty in order to like arrest them. And so, like, that's less of a reason for them to, the person inside, to, like, fight back. Because there's no guarantee they're even, like, going to jail. And um, so, like, let's see, like, they, they showed up. They actually did knock, even though they didn't have to, which is weird. Because, like, why why would you give somebody a no-knock rate and then they choose to knock? Like, why would you even give them an option if, like, you didn't feel, if they themselves didn't feel the need to knock? Or I mean, if they themselves, like, didn't feel that there was a need to not knock? I think that's another perfect example of, like, you bring everybody to the table and like, why does this even exist yeah. in the first place? And yeah. how can we reform this so that what happened to Breonna Taylor yeah. doesn't happen to anybody else? Yeah, so, like, I mean, I, I personally feel it's unjustified because, like, they're, they're accused of, like, selling drugs, and I, I don't really care about they're selling drugs. And so... <laughs> So they're already wrong on that metric, mm -hmm. and so and now they're like using this like extreme metric where like uh, they 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 said they knocked. They also said they uh, announced themselves. And um, Kenneth Walker, the boyfriend, mm -hmm. like that's where their stories like match up. Where they said like he heard a knock. It was like it was like like twelve or, like past midnight. Yeah. So it's very reasonable. Like strange people knock on your door, and, like you don't answer. You pretend like you're right. sleeping or whatever. Would you? I yeah. Would it. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> I <definitely wouldn't. laughs> And so, um, they said they announced themselves, and then, like, they're also, like, plain clothes. So, like, yeah. like even if somebody, like, says, it's, you hear a knock on the door, and they say they're the cops. So, okay, you open up, and then you see, like, three random guys. Like, you might think, like, okay, you guys actually aren't cops, mm -hmm. you know? And so you might, there's no Yeah, there's nothing. So, you might, like, you know, slam the door in your face and, like, yeah. go grab a gun. So, like... Wait, what what was happening? Well, who knows if you're, you know, half asleep and then yeah. you wake up and so yeah. not everybody's attuned to keeping those nighttime hours <laughs> like you are. <laughs> yeah, and so like well, from their side of the story, like, they announce themselves and like they give them enough time, and then like they knock down the door and they go in and they say that they see like I think they saw like two people in the hallway like mm -hmm. Kenneth and um, Brianna and then like Kenneth like fires at them. But like Kenneth is saying, like he didn't actually see who he was like shooting at. He just heard people knock on the door and just like um, like fired a warning shot at the ground, yeah. which ended up like shooting the guy. Like, I, don't, I don't know exactly where on the ground he fired. Maybe it ricocheted upward, or maybe he just like fired and just you know. Yeah, I mean, up. I think that's always a hard thing to, to figure out. You know, lab. I'm not big on guns. Yeah. Um, but like, if you. I think the whole thing about, like, guns and police, it's just, like, it's never going to end well. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean that, that kind of, like, speaks to my point about how, like, the cops are, essentially, they're acting like criminals. Because, like, if somebody kicks down your door the dead at night, you're going to assume that it's a breaking in and you're going to defend yourself. If you can't tell, no, I think that's... I think that's a fair observation. Yeah, so I keep arguing with people saying that they should um they should have like shown up in a reasonable hour. Yeah. And announce in themselves. Uniform. Yeah, in uniform yeah. with body cams. That's it. Like they didn't have body cams. Yeah. And so like we're just going off of what they're saying of what the police said and what Kenneth said mm -hmm. and how like we're supposed to figure out what happened from that when like they should just wear body cams because they they didn't, they started ha using body cams. I, I think like think, ten, 10 years ago. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that the use of body cameras should be mandatory all the time. Because, I mean, then it's easy to prove or disprove yeah. whatever anybody thinks. Cause you're, I mean, it's no different than like a security camera at an office or anything mm -hmm. else. Or, you mm -hmm. know, you said you arrived at 8.30 and here you are at 8.45. Yeah. Like, you know, so it doesn't matter what you say or I say. It just matters. Like, this is what happened and yeah. we can show it you. Yeah, and so like one of the one of the three police officers, he got fired because like like I think like the uh, department did their own investigation and they saw that he was like firing like blindly into the window, or like he couldn't because there were like blinds uh, or covers or whatever, so he couldn't see through who he was shooting at. I mean, I, I call this a death squad because it's like they're set up a situation where people reasonably believe they're being attacked, and so they're gonna fight back. Right. But then you know, like the police. They have the ability to defend themselves, and so if somebody attacks them, they can just shoot them. Yeah. You know, 
which, you know, in a real situation, they would be in the right. They're just defending themselves. But they set up the situation where, like, the person they're going after has a reason to believe that they're being attacked and they're going to, like, pull out a gun to defend, pull out a gun or a baseball bat or whatever to defend themselves. But to your point, if they had a body camera, yeah, I know. we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Yeah, we, we wouldn't see what happened. Look at the tweets. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I definitely, I am not sure. That's actually another thing for me to. I'm not sure what the rules are in Ohio on body cameras for like municipalities. Uh, I feel like every cop I've seen has a body cam. So, I mean, I that's just my anecdotal evidence. I don't weapons. know if that is because they've chosen to do it though, or because. He said they yeah. had to do it, and I don't know if that's true for like every department. Because there are a lot of like those small municipal departments like mm-hmm. across the state. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in like Louisville, where that whole Breonna Taylor situation happened, I think they on their own decided to get body cams because mm-hmm. like like a long time ago they saw this shit going down and like they want to get ahead of it. Yeah. And so, like, they would have kept with that mentality, like... <laughs> but also for the police, like, you know, if if they really are doing everything according to their, like, training manual, yeah. I'd imagine they'd want to be like, look, yeah. this is our protocol, and this is what we did. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and, like, it also protects the cops, because, like, there are people who just make false claims against the cops as well. Yeah. And so, like, mm-hmm. that can be proven by their own body cams. Right. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. like... The three cops, like, uh, one, the only punishment I've known of is that one of them got fired, but, like, they're all walking free, yeah. you know? And so, I kind of compare that to, like, the Kyle Rittenhouse situation, or how, like, there's a video of him, like, just running away, trying to get away from his attackers, like, both times, because, like, like, a lot of the articles people talk about it, they, they always leave out the part where, like, the first shooting was him running away from someone and getting caught by that person, you know? So that guy's like in jail right now, while like the three cops who like basically like broke in somebody's house over drugs are like allowed to walk free. Yeah, I mean, I, I just have a hard time with like a written house thing because it's like you know. So it in my other job, I work for a labor union, so we protest stuff all mm-hmm. the time. We have protested mm-hmm. stuff for years, mm-hmm. and it, like I'm a big believer in like if you don't believe in something then go try to change it like that's your right to protest but to be thoughtful can you give me one second this is the second time you me hello i didn't think so are we oh i i cannot but i can have maya get on the zoom and then you can just keep me posted i didn't think we were going to Okay, let me call Maya and have her get on as the host, and then she can get you guys together, and then you can just update you later. What about you? Okay. Okay, well, I, um, ha- I'm in a meeting right now, and I have another meeting at 10, but I'll call you when I get out of that. Okay, fine. I am so sorry. Give me one second. Apparently we are having a meeting, but nobody told me. <laughs> I was like, well, but they can press on without me. <laughs> I apologize. I'm so sorry. That's fine. Oh. Hi, Maya. How are you? I'm good. Can you do me a favor? Can you actually hop on that Zoom? I didn't think we were having it, but apparently we are. And so um, the other three want to still meet. Um, so could you just to hop on and maybe give Sean O'Brien like host privileges? I am so sorry for the inconvenience. I appreciate it. All right, thanks, Maya. Bye. I'm so sorry about that. So. You're saying something like if I forgot exactly what you're saying, but like if you like believe something, you have every right to go out and protest. Oh yeah, but to, to do it like when we were protesting, like people don't like people on either side like don't carry guns or weapons. Mm-hmm. Like you know, we had protests, counter protests, mm-hmm. all of that, and I just feel like there should be a way that everybody can do that where they feel safe. I mean, it's no different. Like when we were starting to do like the closures and stuff at the state house, and a lot of the people who were anti closure mm-hmm. would come and protest, but they would like bring guns, and I'm like, 
you in protest, like, that's all well and good. You know, take it away, but it, that to me just seems like a little much. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't, I mean, I'm fine with people, like, protesting, like, with weapons, because, like, there's some instances, like, the police actually, like, instigating uh, violence at these protests, so they can justify, like, shutting them down. There's also, like, situations where, like... Which is not okay. Yeah, I agree. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I would assume that you would think that's okay. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, like, where they, they would just, like... It's kind of crazy. Like, after the whole uh, George Floyd thing, like, you just have, like, a shit ton of videos of, like, these protests being, like, dealt with, like, improperly by the police, where, like, the protesters are just, like, like just hanging out doing their own thing. And then, like, the police would just, like, attack them, you know? Like, there's, there's even Which instances... Not okay. Yeah, I mean, there's even instances of, uh... There's, I saw a video that was, like, really fucking crazy, where, like, these police, who, like, they, they look like the army, you know? Like, they, yeah, they, they're they all... They're all in cam. They're all wearing camouflage, and like there was act. They even had a um, what's it called? They had and, like, a, come in with the tank. Yeah, they, they had. And, yeah. <laughs> I'm not much on that. Yeah, they had a Humvee with them as well. Yeah. And so like they're like marching down the street, and they're just people like looking at. They're just sitting on like the front porches looking at them. Yeah. Because like they're creating a spectacle. Like people are gonna want to look at that, and they turn around and they start shooting like uh, paintballs at them. Yeah, and like that to me is completely unreasonable too. Yeah, I agree. Like, People should have the right to gather, the right to protest, you know, and neither the police nor the protesters should, yeah. you know, just be respectful of each other's position. I agree. And so, like, one reason why, like, one reason why there's a, why people would want to like protest while being armed is like the police are really like less willing to like aggress on them mm -hmm. because they know the shit show is going to happen if they do that. So they're like have more of like a hands off approach. Oh, yeah. yeah, it just makes me. I just feel like there's a, a shorter journey to where things get totally out of hand, you know. I mean, the thing, the reason why there's a big protest when it comes around like the whole George Floyd thing is because like the police aren't acting properly. Yeah. And so, like, I can understand people like arming themselves because they don't expect the police to act properly. They well, need some like say, two wrongs don't make a right. Well, I don't think. <laughs> I, well, I don't think showing up armed is wrong. Yeah. Like, I think people have a right to defend themselves, even from the government. And so, uh, let's see, where was, oh yeah, with Kyle, like, he, he wasn't there for a part of a protest, like, there was, like, like, actual rioting, I'm not talking about, like, protests and calling them all rioters, I don't believe that, I think, if you're protesting, you're a protester, if you're rioting, you're a rioter, and so, like, this guy's business, his family-owned business, like, a huge chunk of it just got burned to the ground, you know, you can watch videos of, like, the car lot just being on fire, people, like, busting out, like, windshields of the car for whatever reason, I don't know, like, what that guy did, but I, you see, they think he's at fault for something. Yeah, but anyway, like it was like these militia guys showed up to like protect what's left of the the property, and Kyle just like decided to tag along along with them. And so like he wasn't there to like protest; he was there to like help protect the private property as well as like protect um, or provide medical aid to whoever was injured. And you can watch videos of him like looking around for people who've been injured, yeah. and that's kind of why he got separated. Because um, he like walked to the, I forgot where he walked to, but he walked to this area where he thought someone was injured, he didn't find anyone was injured, and so he tried to like turn around and walk back to like the, the group. But for some reason, like there was like a line of police between him and the group and the area he's trying to go to, and they turned around, turned home, told him to turn around. And so he turned around, uh, him along with like a, a bunch of other people as well. So he turned around and started like walking the other way around, and that's when uh, Joseph Rosenbaugh, the guy who originally got shot, that's that's what happened. That's uh, when he started chasing after him. Yeah, yeah. I'm not intimately familiar with all of that, but just from what I from what I know, it seems like that could have gone in a much different direction. I agree. Like, I mean, Kyle, maybe that he should. Didn't involve people dying. <laughs> I mean, Kyle, you, you can make the argument that Kyle shouldn't have been there, but the reality is, like, he was there. And I think since he was there, he should have at least, um, like, stayed with a, a group, or stay with a, a larger group, or if he's going to, like, split off, like, have, like, you know, have, like, a group of two or three people, you know, because that, that would have, like, even more discouraged them from, like, attacking him. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be really interesting, too, to see, like, if people do take meaningful action, because, you know, there are so many people out protesting and really calling for change, but not as much action uh -huh. on the half, on behalf of lawmakers yeah. to listen to what folks are saying. Yeah. So the reason why, well, the reason why I'm bringing up Kyle Rittenhouse, because like he's in like jail right now, awaiting um, trial. 
Whereas, like, the three coffee shop around Taylor, they're all, like, all walking free. And so that's a big difference between, like, you know, they community... They jail, too? Yeah, I know. It's a big difference between, like, community <laughs> policing and, like, the system we have now. And so... But, but again, it's, like, equal application yeah, um, I know, but, like, I, I think that's one way to get equal application if people don't have that protection. I also like the idea of, like, um, like law enforcement being, like, more and more in the hands of, like, the citizens. Yeah. Because then, like, the citizens themselves, like, they can see, like, the effects of like their own community mm -hmm. and they can decide on which laws they're going to enforce. Like if they think like, you know, enforcing laws against drugs is going to uh, help their community, then they can do that. If they think it's doing more harm than good, then they can just stop. Because there's a lot of people who are like complaining about the drug war. It's, it's not just that like the drug war happened and it's in the past, like it's still going. After like, what has it been like 60 years since it started? Too long and yeah. not working. Yeah, I know. And you end up with like this like mass incarceration. Yeah. Like, um, Neighborhoods being turned in, yeah, I don't know, like neighborhoods being turned into like war zone. You know, like prisons who are just so over over stuff. Like the guards, they can't control everyone, yeah. and so like they just like look the other way when the prisoners realize each other. Because if they're attacking each other, they're not attacking the guards. Yeah. But sometimes even like the guards get like taken over and they Which, get like that's a huge problem too. Yeah, yeah, that's a huge problem because those are also people who take great risks. Yeah. to do their job yeah. every every single day. Yeah, and so I mean that's that's another reason why I, I don't like. Like, there being so many laws, there's just so many excuses to throw somebody in a cage. Yeah. And, like, I think, like, it's just immoral to do that unless um, somebody's committing, like, a violent act. Mm -hmm. You know? And I agree with you in a, in a lot of ways that, mm. you know, we're quick to enhance punishments yeah. on things to try to make it a deterrent. But I think a lot of times, you know, we try to put band-aids on things instead of figuring out what sort of the root cause mm -hmm. of all of it. I mean, so like one of the things that I really care a lot about is raising pay for people mm -hmm. and raising the minimum wage and, you know, people are always like, well, you know, this is a problem or that's a problem or what about this or what about that? But the bottom line is at the end of the day, a lot of times, if you give people tools that they need to provide for themselves and mm -hmm. take care of themselves, then it can resolve some of the other issues that exist. But instead, it's like, okay, we want to do X, Y, or Z mm -hmm. to treat the symptom yeah. of the problem that is people are working hard and not making enough money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm not entirely sure if like raising the minimum wage will help that because um, like these small businesses that are, um, that are like, struggling to survive, like, I don't know how many of them can actually, like, actually, um, afford to pay their workers, like, $15 an hour. And so, like, after, like, their COVID shutdown, after, like, these riots, because there's, like, a lot of, like, small businesses that are being, like, burned down yeah. in these riots. And so, and then, like, you, like, raise them in a wage. So, like, now they have to, like, fork out more money to pay their employees. Who then so, have more money to go spend at small businesses in well, communities. Well, that's the thing. It's, like, they still need to, like... Yeah, I know, but they still need to, like, <laughs> jump that gap between, like, being able to pay their employees in order to stay in business to actually provide a service. And so it seems like corporations are far better able to, like, afford the uh, $15 an hour. So I feel like there's, like, this feedback loop of, like, corporations have an edge, and now, like, people are um, still, like, starting their own businesses. They go work for these corporations, and they're like, okay, well, now I need, like, health care, or I need, like, time off, I need this, that, and the other. And then they go back, and, like... But, they, like, they go back to like the government saying like, "Hey, can you make the corporations like give me all this stuff?" And they just end up with a feedback loop of like the government getting more and more powerful to fight against the, um, the corporations. But so like if I if I work at like Walmart, for example, mm -hmm. and I you know make eight bucks, eight nine bucks an hour, well mm -hmm. I guess eight seven. If I make nine dollars an hour, mm -hmm. chances are I don't have access to health care, mm -hmm. so I get that from the state. Chances are, even if I work 40 hours a week, I don't have enough money to pay my rent mm -hmm. and put food on my table. So I get assistance from the state, which mm -hmm. people are well within their rights to do, and uh, they, and in my opinion, they should do that. Or we can say, hey, we're going to pay you $15 an hour, so now you can pay your rent mm -hmm. and you can put food on your table. But you don't need extra assistance from the state mm -hmm. in order to do that. Which, you know, is good on a lot of levels. It's the other problem with that is there are you familiar with the benefits cliff? No. Yeah. To be honest, like this, I'm I'm not an economist. Like oh, this is no, this is some things I've heard, so I'm yeah. not like this is I'm not 
I don't consider myself an expert in anything, but I'm definitely not an expert in like economics. Oh no! So basically, what happens is like it's a point of diminishing returns. So if you have a job where you make nine dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and then you get promoted to a job that pays you say ten fifty an hour, you might make an extra hundred dollars a week, mm -hmm. but you might lose four hundred dollars in benefits because oh. your income threshold grows over this. Mm -hmm. point. And so it's like instead of incentivizing people to take promotions and more opportunities and to be able to make more money and then still have the assistance that they need to keep them sort of at the same place, it's like, okay, if I get a promotion, I'm going to get this much more money and I'm going to lose this many more benefits. And so I think that's another one of those like big problems where, you know, we could really do a lot of good for folks if we could just come together and really like be thoughtful about how we want to, you know, reward people who decide to take on, you know, extra responsibility, promotions, higher paying jobs, whatever. Well, I mean, I like the idea of like getting the government out of the way so like small businesses can like flourish. Mm -hmm. And so like if you like put more and more laws and like you have to do this, that, and the other, then it's like it's hard to jump through. Whereas like if you're a corporation, it just makes it so much easier for you to, to jump through because you all the money, you can like, hire all the lawyers, get around, oh, yeah. you can hire people, do all that. kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So like one thing about it is like I feel like this is like you know training wheels for like libertarianism. Mm -hmm. It's like you complain about uh, what is it like hairstyles? How like you have to be like a licensed like style hair? I mean, if you're like some person who's been like you know do, like, styling hair since you were 12 years old, like why should you have to turn around and get a license? Well, some of it t is so that the state can inspect your space and make sure that it's safe and healthy for the people who come through your salon, for example. <laughs> Some of it is to make sure that you've appropriate. So you might have been cutting hair for 12. So we had a guy come in um, to testify on one of our bills that was going to change licensure for hair, which this has been like one of the most controversial bills in my time in the legislature. Um, and I think it's been around for like three or four general assemblies, but it's been through one of my committees twice. And this guy said, hey, you know, like I learned to cut hair on YouTube. Uh, like people come, like I'll do it, it's fine. But he hasn't had any sanitation training. Mm -hmm. And the skin is the body's biggest organ. Mm -hmm. And it can spread infection really quickly. And there are certain things that you need to do, both with your tools and with your clients, to say, you well, know, well, how, you shave in your face. Well, you're saying that this could happen, you. but like, I'm kind of questioning, like, how often does it happen? Um, I'm sure the Board of Cosmetology could give you a list of all, well, like how often does somebody nick somebody's face when they're shaving? No, 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 not nick somebody's face <laughs> when they're shaving, but how often does like, there's like some horrible effect that happens from, you know, not, somebody not keeping, not, not like people going to like an unsanitary condition, but, but people I think like to not that, keep. Right? So like if you know that you have to keep a uh, safe, healthy workspace, if you know if, you, if I'm shaving your face and I know if you start bleeding, I know this is how I stop him bleeding, this is how I clean my tool, this is how I make sure that I don't get, you know, any body matter on me, this is how I know that none of my body matter gets, like, that stuff is important. Well, I think you can deal with that with, like, lawsuits. Like, if you get sick because you went to, like, a uh, salon, like, you can, like, sue them. And if, like, you walk into a salon and it's, like, it's, you can just basically see it's unsanitary, then you just, like, walk out the door, you know? And also, like, I think, like, you have to go to cosmetology school. And, like, I'm against that because like, if you're just talking about, like, you want a permit so people can just go in and, like, to um, look in, to have uh, inspectors look in, then just have it so, like, your business life, you can, like, wrap it in with, like, the business license that, like, it says that you have to, like, allow inspectors in. You have to like, hire? What? Like, you talk to uh, are you, if that's something you're interested in, I'll send you the link to the bill and you can read all the testimony and all the stuff. Is that something that's of interest? Yeah, hey, go ahead. But like, I'm more interested in my like, actual like, statistics of like, before we have this bill, we had this many incidents and after we have a bill, like, or like, not this bill specific because I haven't yeah. passed yet, but like, previous areas, like, they've had this bill. Before they had this bill, there was like this many incidents and before there was like a drop in this many incidents. Yeah. I heard there's a lot of like black market salons. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of wondering, it's like, do you have, or I, how many stories are coming out of there that, is it, is it such a big, it, how many stories are coming out of those, like, black market salons? Like the basement to, salon. Yeah, to, like, to, to warrant, like, this kind of bills. Because I feel like the reason why, like, they're, like, black market is because they have to 
you know, goes to school where like, I think like I think it's like eighteen months. It it varies from like different yeah. states. It's ridiculous that every state has this. But like going from like uh, I think. So does that mean you're a bigger proponent of the federal government uh, regulating cosmetology rules? I'm against nobody regulating <laughs> cosmetology rules. But oh, like... No, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if somebody has like a business license, it's like you're going to like be cutting hair. Yeah. Then you can just wrap it. You don't need to like say that you need to take like eight, eight months of class, 18 months of classes so you can cut hair. You should just say that like... Okay, you have to meet these standards, and that's it. You know, as long as you meet those standards, there's no issue. I'm going to send this over to you so you can check it out. I think you'll find some of the testimony really interesting. Um, it, it, another thing is like one thing I like looking up is like the abuse of government power, mm -hmm. and the government uses. I think in, they did this in Florida. They use like these uh, barber shops and um, bars, like as an excuse, to, like send in SWAT teams as like inspections, but they're really just like SWAT raids looking for drugs. And like they they did that because um, they didn't have to get um, what's it called warrants. They didn't have to get warrants because if there's like an inspector along with them, then it's technically an inspection. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. If you have anything on that, send that over. To yeah. You. I could, uh, let's see. Uh, there's this guy. I forgot his name, but he wrote the book called uh, Rise of the Warrior Cop. What's it called? Rise of the Warrior Cop. Okay. I'm not entirely sure that's exactly what it's called, but something like that. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, he he made uh, it... Now I'm taking your own notes for me <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> and so, um. This seems unjust. <laughs> it is. I mean, this whole like part. Is, no, is I part was just kidding. What? You were making me do your own. Oh, that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, like, it's just a lot, it's part of, like, the whole drug war. It's, like, you give them a tool, and, like, you're interested in finding the drug war, so they'll use it to fight that drug war. And so... I'll check that out for sure. And, um, let's see. He has his, I'll send you a link, because I'm sure I can find it again, where he's, like, talking about, um, like, how, like, police will abuse their power. And, uh, he brought one instance of, um, this guy, he was, uh, he was a snack, he was in the Marine Corps, I think he served in Iraq. Yeah. And so they sent a SWAT team to his house because they thought he was selling drugs. And so it was like a no knock raid. And so they were, they were wearing uniforms. to his house and it, not it, to his place of business? It's to his house. Okay. And so, like, they were wearing uniforms and whatnot. But the thing is, like, um, like it was like a no knock raid. Yeah. And so they kicked down his door and he thinks he's getting broken into. So he, he like, throws his uh, family into, like, the closet. Yeah. And he pulls out a rifle and posts up on the, on the door. Sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, like that's messed up. Yeah, I know. So like, they they go into his house and they they see like the barrel of his gun poking out and they just like unload on him. I think they fire like three hundred rounds or something. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. There's another instance of where like um, they go into this guy's house and they end up like shooting his dog, which happens quite a lot. Like dog. Oh really? Yeah, cops shooting dogs. There's actually a meme of like the gun community about like the ATF kicking out people's doors and shooting their dogs. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting. We work a lot with um, some animal advocates, and they've actually never brought that up. Really? To us, which I'm kind of surprised about. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I don't know like how often people actually look this stuff up because like if you if you're not like looking up like what cops are doing, then you don't know what cops are doing. You just see yeah. like what's on the news, you know. So there are people who think that like it's mostly the black people or only black people get shot unfairly by the cops, but yeah. it's like there's a large range of people get shot by the cops unfairly. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Which is, I don't know, I feel like there are so many things. Oh, shit. These guys cannot literally run their own. Say again? They literally cannot run their own Zoom meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot, I think there's a lot of work to do. I think there's going to continue to be a lot of work to do. I am not optimistic that there's going to be, like, any kind of transformative change. So, between now and December 31st of 2020, mm -hmm. at all the bills that have been introduced, if they are not signed by the governor by December 31st of 2020, they die. Oh, really? And the process has to start all over again. So, we've only got, so we only have a couple session days scheduled in September. Mm -hmm. So, we'll have October, which I think we're only scheduled to meet a few times then. Um, November, so, so basically three months of whenever we have session days to get through all the legislation that is currently pending in the House. Yeah. And so, 
if it's not far along in that process, mm. I am not optimistic at all that it's going to go through, especially because they've had so much controversy on the majority side mm. lately that yeah. it makes it, it, it's hard to believe that there will be a pathway yeah. for that in such a short period of time. I just mm. think it's unlikely. So when you talk about stuff that was introduced, like related to police brutality and stuff, when stuff like that was introduced like in the spring, mm. I think it's really unlikely. Before we end real quick, like... It's funny, like, people talk about how, like, um, there's, like, a racial bias with, like, within, like, the police or the government. It's, like, like I said before, like, you give them, like, less, you give them less laws and force, you give them less excuses. Yeah. And so, like, uh, <laughs> when I brought the Brown Taylor um, incident, like, there's, like, a, a, a group, a large group of black men who are, like, they're dressed in, like, military garb, they're walking around with guns. Did you hear about that? No. <laughs> They're called the uh, Not Fucking Around Coalition. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do they have like an acronym so that they it's it, N, <laughs> NFAC. And they they can't help but fuck around, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that later. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send you, I'll I'll send you links. <laughs> <laughs> that you should with. probably send to me through Twitter because I'm guessing the state house spam filter oh. may pick that up as undeliverable. Yeah, I, I will send that to t- <laughs> the Twitter. Oh, uh, we just want to bring them up because, like, you have like a large group of guy, black men who are like armed. Yeah. And this is like going on in Kentucky, you know, like a red state where you yeah. would assume where people are like even more biased against black people. And I just thought about how, like, that would not happen in, like, California. It wouldn't happen in New York and other states. And so, like, you had, um, I forgot her last name, but Jessica. Miranda. Yeah, Jessica Miranda. How, like, previously she was saying that, like, if, like, she was talking about the, um, Michigan State House or a bunch of, like, armed douche, like, stormed the place or whatever. However you wanted to find it. Their laws are different there, too, though. I know, but uh, the reason I bring it up, because, like, she said that, like, oh, if a group of uh, black guys were walking around armed, they get immediately gunned down. But then you have a situation where in Kentucky, a bunch of guys are, um, a bunch of guys are walking around armed, a bunch of black guys are walking around armed, and she's complaining that there isn't a law to justify the police going after them. And so I just find that as, like, a very conflict, two conflicting statements. Yeah. Like, she wants there to be a law to, like, harass these guys. And I'm saying, like, less laws, there's less excuses. And so, like, if there was a, if they had an issue with these people, like, they wouldn't have that excuse to go after them. Yeah. Well, and I'm not sure if that's, I'm not sure, I can't speak for her. Yeah, I, I, I'm not um, right. But, yeah, it's, whoever, but the, I will say the laws in Michigan are a little bit different because you are permitted to carry a firearm into the state house in yeah. Michigan, but you are not permitted to carry a firearm into the state house in Ohio. Oh, there's a question. So, there. fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, neither one of us can say we didn't learn anything today. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, send me that stuff. I will send you. So I have on my list of stuff to send you um, the instances on white and white crime and about whether there are more instances of incidents with white cops and uh, black offenders. Um, the qualified immunity bill, if it exists, I'll send you that and let you know who's sponsoring it. If, it, if there's a state bill for that, um, check on the body camera rules for law enforcement and send you a link the cosmetology bill so that yeah. you can have a little light reading in your spare time. Alright. <laughs> cool. Uh, oh, another reason why I brought up like, the, what happened in Kentucky is like the same people who are like speaking out against like the drug war. I mean, I don't know how much they speak out against it, but if I bring it up to them, they're like yeah, that's fucked up. That shouldn't have happened. But like, I use that as like an example of like how, how much the government can screw up and how far they're going to take their own screw up. And so I use that to argue against, like, a lot of these gun laws to say, like, hey, if you keep pushing for more and more gun laws, like, long after it's been proven that it doesn't work, they're going to keep pushing it. They'll still, like, even if, like, a law doesn't save you alive, like, they'll still throw you in a cage. They'll still shoot you. They'll still shoot your dog to enforce it. I will say that I think it's very unlikely that this legislature will pass any laws that restrict um, anything that has to do with firearms. I mean... We don't know what's going to happen in the future, though. So, like, At least until December 31st of yeah. 2020, I feel confident to say that this legislature is not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah, but um, the reason I bring it up is because, like, 
like like I said, I follow a lot of like Democrats yeah. on um, Twitter, and they're too confident, but they're very confident they're gonna like flip Ohio. And so if they do flip Ohio, we could have a situation we'll where see. yeah, we well, can see. We get a yeah. situation what happened in where, like Virginia, yeah. where like I I'm pretty sure the plain people thought that that would never happen, but it happened, and now they have pushed out like a bunch of the under control laws, and there are people like fighting tooth and nail to like yeah. just to um not even like break even, just to, like to uh, maintain what little they have left. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know where to find me. Yeah. So, tweet me, email me, do your homework, send me the stuff. Uh, it's okay if I stick around for you guys. Um, so, private? we're going to do our, our next meeting on this. So, if you want to get coffee again, just let me know, and we'll come back here. Right. It's good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you, too. Come tune back into our lunch with your legislators. I don't know. It's... <laughs> or not. <laughs> Or not. To be fair, I only have like certain interests, and it's like, unless you're talking about something I'm interested in, I'm Hi, probably Harry, not going to tune in. Hi, Harry. Well, if you have suggestions, let me know. Yeah. All right. Thanks uh, for your time. I was just wondering if you guys, I mean, you guys have like a private meeting? You don't We've got some stay? stuff to chat about, so it's probably best if you and I catch up separately some other time. All right. It's good to see you. Oh, yeah. Hey, you can have that. What is it? Uh, I 3D printed that. Oh, that's nice. awesome. Yeah. I designed it as well. That is cool. This is really cool. Yeah. How long did it take you to do this? Uh, designing it is... Designing it didn't take that long. This looks it's like it was really hard to do. Oh, no, 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 no. Was this <laughs> the easiest part? <laughs> well, I mean, the 3D print is all the work. I just I just need to design it. I just this is awesome. Or you, well, here's another thing about, like, gun control. Is, like, people have figured out how, like, 3D print guns. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, are the police going to start harassing people who have 3D printers? Who knows? I, you know what? I can't wait to send this to Cedric because he's going to be jealous. I'm going to put this up in my office. All right. Probably should meet him because I actually do live in the uh, area that he's running oh, for. You're, you're in Cedric's district. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Yet here I am. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Oh, one thing I can compliment him for is that like, he doesn't tweet that much on uh, Twitter. Yeah. And so, like, there's less um, hot takes in the world, less stupid shit that I can point out on yeah. his timeline. Uh, well, maybe then don't keep paying attention to my. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, don't forget to send me that stuff. I will not. Thanks, Take care. You do. See you. With the coalition.